Hi everyone and welcome. I know it's been a pretty long day and I really, really appreciate you for joining the session. I'm going to be talking about my journey to adopting Opo Telemetry in my team. A little bit about me. I am a software engineer. I work on Microsoft, I specifically work in a team where we are trying to manage Microsoft cloud infrastructure. And outside of my day job, I love to encourage developers to embrace more observability practices. When I'm not at work or advocating for observability, I love to be outdoors, whether you know, cycling or going on a hike. That said, to kickstart the session, I would like to start by sharing my journey to open telemetry. How did I actually even get introduced to this term called open telemetry in the first place? And my journey to open telemetry actually started with the term observability. I encountered observability in my team, actually, someone had casually used the, word, used the word, oh, we need to do better observability in the team. And, you know, everybody was like, oh, what's that term, right? So I particularly got curious about it and I started to research about it. And then I realized that, oh, we've been doing some form of observability, but probably we didn't even know what we're doing because we used to do logs, we used to collect metrics in some form, but generally we just knew that this was something that could help us when we were troubleshooting or when we you know, get into issues. We didn't really realize that this was a practice that we could really embrace and do more of. So that curiosity led me to, oh sorry. Yeah, that curiosity led me to attending the Observability Day at KubeCon, North America last year. And this was a huge turning point in my journey because I got to listen to so many amazing talks from different speakers. And it wasn't just me understanding that concept of observability. I was able to understand the different observability practices that people were doing in their teams and how they were trying to adopt this in the organization. So this also made me get to, okay. yeah, this also, sort of introduced me to what that term open telemetry meant and the importance of open telemetry to the observability world. So it wasn't just even about understanding open telemetry, I got introduced to the community and this has been of immense help when it came to our adoption of open telemetry. So before going forward in my, you know, talking about my journey and how our adoption story, I wanted to do a quick refresher on open telemetry in case if this is the first time somebody is hearing about this term or you have no idea about what open telemetry is. And if you already understand open telemetry, please just give us one or two minutes to sort of, you know, talk about this just to ensure that everybody's carried along. So what is open telemetry? You know, a definition around it is to say it is an observability framework that collects and um, that provides a standardized tooling, APIs and SDKs to allow you to be able to collect, manage, export telemetry data in a vendor agnostic way. I know that definition sounds like a mouthful and in case you're still wondering what exactly that is, let me give it another shot in explaining it. So open telemetry is not just another observability tool. It is comprised of you know, several aspects and tools, which is why we call it an observability framework or toolkit. So a typical integration or a typical workflow of you integrating this into your application will start with you using the APIs and SDKs to generate and collect data out of your application. So we have several you know, APIs and SDKs available in different languages. Most common languages are currently supported. So you pick the, lang um, the APIs and SDKs that are relevant to the language you are using in your application. And then you instrument your application with it to be able to collect this telemetry data. Then this telemetry data is sent to an open telemetry, to a particular central component, whether it be the open telemetry collector, which is still part of the framework, or you're using a dedicated agent, maybe provided by a vendor or maybe your organization actually provided an agent for you. And telemetry data is sent from your application to this you know, collector or agent via a protocol called OTLP, which is the open telemetry protocol. That is the language or protocol that is used to you know, provide a standard around how telemetry data is transmitted from one component to the other 
whether it be from your application to the collector or even from the collector to the observability, different observability platforms you want to integrate or get to use with. And then open telemetry has been designed to be, you know, easy to integrate with existing telemetry frameworks. So let's say you already had an application that was making use of existing frameworks before open telemetry, that is the open tracing, open census kinds, or open metrics. You can still, and you feel like, oh, we don't want to start again in instrumenting it all over again with open telemetry APIs and SDKs. You can still forward that metric coming from that application to the open telemetry collector. Now with the open telemetry collector or whatever agent you're using, you can be able to now process, transform, filter, you know, that data or do whatever you want with that telemetry data before now forwarding it to as much observability platforms as you want. You can decide to use a mix and match of different observability platforms, switch between you know, one platform to the other, or you can make use of open source or even your own in-house observability platform. And that is where the no vendor locked in promise of open telemetry comes in giving you that you know, standard way of collecting telemetry data, irrespective of wherever you are sending it to. So this awesomeness of you know, open telemetry is the reason why I felt like, oh, this is going to be something that is going to be super useful in my team and something we really need to start looking towards adopting, which was, which which came to you know, our motivation for actually adopting open telemetry. You know, the specific motivation came from the fact that we had always wanted a solution that could help us measure latency across our applications. So as request goes from one system or one service to the other, which our, our, services are, um, our systems are made up of several services, and as this request is flowing from one service to the other, we wanted to be able to understand, you know, how much time is being taken, what component took so much time in processing this particular request. So that measurement of latency was what drove us into the fact of, you know, finding solutions. And because I had started to learn about this, had gotten so much idea about this, I felt like, oh yeah, distributed tracing is a very great solution to this. And when it comes to achieving distributed tracing, there is no way you are not going to come across open telemetry. You know, someone has once said that whether you, if you're doing metrics, there are like tons of tools or there are different tools out there that can allow you to do metrics. Logs, there are like several libraries and tools you can use to collect and visualize logs from your application. But when it comes to tracing, there are like, you know, it's very challenging to be able to say you want to achieve tracing without actually thinking about open telemetry. So this was a similar story in our case. Actually, Microsoft had been advocating for open telemetry and whenever it came to, oh, we wanted to do tracing, they would always point you to make sure you, can you instrument your application with open telemetry and that way you can easily collect that traces and forward it to the particular observability platform we had. So that was where our motivation came you know, into, okay, yeah, we actually need to adopt this open telemetry. And so the journey to adopting open telemetry began. But with this journey came some expectations that I felt like, oh, this is the way this journey is going to take. And then the reality of, you know, the actual journey began to unfold. So let me know if any of this resonates with you and if there were any expectations or realities you also faced during your own body journey, I would also lo love to know that as well. So I grouped these expectations and realities into three categories. First, the conceptual aspect, which was around understanding and the knowledge aspect, and then the cultural shift, which was around getting your team or getting her team to be on board with this journey, um, on this journey with, with you. And then the technical aspect, which was around the you know, major work of integrating it into our system and our different services. Starting with the conceptual aspect, I really, really underestimated the amount of learning that would go into you know, understanding what exactly 
open telemetry was all about, the different components in open telemetry and how they play together or how they can be used in you know, our application. And depending on the different components you would need for your own application, open telemetry can seem complex to some people and seem really, really easy to use to some other people. And for me, I felt like there were some resource gaps when it came to actually using open telemetry in large scale production environments. Although I feel like this is beginning to improve as more and more people start to adopt open telemetry. Open telemetry is really becoming like it's a, an ever growing community and every single day there are like more, more organizations adopting this. And I feel like as more people adopt this and see these challenges, there have been different, like there have been solutions around how to solve these different challenges. And on the actual adoption aspect, you know, I had felt that, oh, adoption was going to be very straightforward and seamless. We can integrate this into applications or our systems easily, especially because I felt there were other organizations doing this. And even in our, in our organization in Microsoft, there were some other teams that are like very, very progressive in terms of, you know, open telemetry, distributed tracing. They were already doing this and I was like, oh yeah, if this team A could achieve this, then obviously we would have no problem doing this. But the shocker around this is that depending on how your system is being shaped or architected, you could you know, have a significant big curve or your adoption can be very, very seamless and easy. In our case, it turned out that because of the way our systems were shaped and architected, it wasn't as easy as I thought. And then the other notion I had had was that, oh, once open telemetry, you know, is integrated into our application, we are going to have amazing observability. Everything is going to be awesome and we don't need to do anything. But then observability is not like a savior to all your, um, open telemetry is not a savior to all your observability problems. You still need to be able to understand how to instrument your code properly to be able to achieve the best out of, you know, open telemetry. And then on the cultural aspect, I had felt that maybe at first, like since developers were the ones that feel, you know, this pain of not having better observability practices, you are the one that feel the pain of not being able to easily know when something is wrong with your application. And someone comes to say, hey, do you know that with traces, we can be able to, you know, root cause issues faster, time to investigate things will be way faster. And you're like, oh, people are going to be very excited about this. But the reality is that it's not that people don't want to adopt this. Of course, when you tell them that, hey, you know, you can do distributed tracing, this is going to be good. People want to have that solution. But where the problem comes is when you're telling them that, oh, we need to learn about this tool, you know, because you need to do the actual instrumentation. And that is where I feel the excitement dies down because people don't really want to learn another tool with so many things that are going on already. Some people are already worried that AI is going to take their jobs. Some people are having to catch up with the ever-growing tech world. And you're now like, oh, we need to learn about this new tool. You know, people are just like, just, just leave me alone, right? And then on the management aspects, it's, could be that it's hard to communicate the exact value of having to do another project, or even when they see the value, there is just always something that is higher priority than us having to think of, you know, making the developer's life better and all that. So it now comes down to how do we actually get both developers and even the management, um, the management chain to be able to embrace this, observability, this open telemetry and observability practice with open hands. Well, I'm going to go over that, you know, further down in the talk. So on the third aspect, which is technically, before I go into this, I want to do a quick detour to give a brief overview of our system landscape, just to give some context so you know where I'm coming from when I go further in the talk. So our system is shaped such that, you know, it's created in like a messaging-like way such that services don't interact directly with each other. There is like a central system or a central source that every service has to communicate through. So a service does, you know, its task, does whatever operation it needs to do with a particular request and submit that request back to that central system. And another service gets to pick it up and do whatever they want to do with it. And it goes 
like that and like that. So each service operates very, very independently from each other. And this was done to ensure that the system was very scalable and flexible and a team only service A can do whatever they want with the service without having to you know, worry about another team B doing you know, something else that owns a particular service and all. And the other aspect to our services was that is that they are created such that they perform their task in batch. So it's not like a particular service is working on a request independently. All these requests are taken in batch, processed, and then you know, submitted back to maybe the central source or system. So, and the other amazing thing is that our services have mostly console applications because I mean, I work in Azure Microsoft Cloud infrastructure, which is like really, really low level stuff. So we do really low level stuff. Our services are mostly C++ and C Sharp. So hopefully you understand where I'm coming from when I you know, continue this. So coming back to my expectations versus reality was, the first challenge around the technical aspect for me was integration. Coming from installing the SDK, which I thought was going to be very pretty, um, pretty easy to making use of the APIs, I had assumed that, oh, you know, integrating this, integrating open telemetry with our systems was going to be like super easy because again, I had, you know, Prove that some other teams had already done this and they were very successful with it. But what I didn't realize was that our system landscape is very different from some other teams' landscape. Some teams, their service probably interact directly with each other. And that way, you know, sending a particular context from one service to another is as easy as what um, is, is more easier than what we would do when, whatever, when we wanted to achieve this. So integration was, you know, somehow not something that turned out to be what I expected. And then on the other aspects of me thinking open telemetry was going to work out of the box with any infrastructure, because again, I felt like this is something a lot of people get to use and it is vendor agnostic, like they say. But in reality, even though it is vendor agnostic or it has vendor, vendor neutrality to it, that doesn't mean that it is instantly compatible with any system out there. So a good knowledge of how your system is shaped, how your system is architected is super, super important when it comes to how successful your adoption is going to be. And on the, instrumentation front, on the instrumentation front, I was, you know, very excited about the promise of, oh, you know, there is automatic instrumentation that comes with open telemetry, being that it's a big community, several people contribute different packages for you to be able to, you know, get that automatic aspect of instrumentation out of it. But, you know, the shocker for me was that, again, our applications are console applications. So, there isn't that straightforward approach to getting automatic instrumentation yet. I know I've been hearing about there are some ways you can still be able to achieve that, which is something we've been trying to explore right now. But yeah, manual instrumentation isn't as fun as you may think it would be, although it is super important, but yeah, it isn't fun. <laughs> I also underestimated the overhead, not just overhead in terms of performance, but overhead in terms of introducing new code. You know, some services, it could be that these are very legacy services that has been running for years that some people just don't want to touch just because it's going to break. And then you're like, oh, we need to add new code for us to be able to get, get traces out of it. So that performance overhead was something as well that I didn't realize we we're going to encounter. And on the major parts, because, you know, this was the reason why we even started to look into this in the first place, we wanted to get distributed tracing out of it, right? So I had expected that we're going to get this amazing, you know, beautiful trace, like once we put, once we integrate open telemetry into our application, we should be able to start seeing distributed traces, how our systems were interacting with each other, and all those amazing things, right? But... The expectation, you know, on getting this type of trace is that maybe your service, service one, is interacting directly to service two, and that way, context can be easily propagated from one service to the other. But what now happens when we have this type of system where they are not talking directly with each other? So how do I send that context from one service to the other? 
And, you know, this was something that sort of took us a while to sort of admit. But again, because Open Telemetry is really growing, there have been, I've been seeing so many people are beginning to think about how, you know, this is a huge problem and there's been several solutions around it, especially around achieving distributed tracing in a messaging like architecture, which is something we've been exploring as well. But the other problem or challenge we did first is the fact that our systems, you know, process requests in batch, right? And we want to be able to trace a particular request as it flows from different services. I want to be able to trace just one single request end to end. So how can I achieve that? How can I be able to say, oh, I know this service did this request in batch and this service did this request in batch, but I just want to trace just this single request one, how it went from one service to the other. You know, that's still something I'm still we are still looking for, so in case if you have any solutions around it, please, I'll be happy to hear. And those have been our, you know, challenges and realities. But it's not enough to just say, oh, it's very challenging, or it's been very challenging to adopt open telemetry, even though there's been so many realities about it. I feel like regardless of whatever the reality is, we had to look for, we are trying to look for how could we make this work? How could we, you know, keep this going? not just feeling like, oh, yeah, this is not working for our systems and, you know, we just give up. So how could we continue with the journey? On the conceptual aspect, we had to first of all realize, at least for me, I had to first of all realize that technology adoption is an iterative process. It's not something that you're just going to feel like, yeah, we start today and then by the end of the week, we should have an amazing system already working. We should have traces beautifully coming out from our system. Rome wasn't built in a day, so definitely getting or having that solution that we crave for is not going to be something that is just come, going to come out of the blues. So, and we needed to be able to adjust expectations to be able to get this. And then the other aspect, which is very, very key and I've been emphasizing, is understanding your system landscape. Being able to understand how your systems work, how your services interact with each other is super, super important. And that even differentiates what somebody's adoption story is like to another person's adoption stories. Because like I said, there are several teams in Microsoft. Some people are already enjoying this and you know, doing amazing things with it. And some teams are still kind of struggling to be able to make this work. And the other aspect is understanding that open telemetry is just not a savior or, you know, a solution to all observability woes, but an actual enabler. And you need to still be able to ensure you are instrumenting or doing things correctly for you to be able to achieve the best out of this. And the last part is leveraging the community. The community is really, really there to help you. Open Telemetry is a very friendly community, at least that I can attest to. Whether you are looking for help, you want to tap in other people's knowledge, or you are even trying to ensure that you don't reinvent the wheel, that is something you can, the community is something you can always turn to. They have, there is a Slack workspace and several channels, depending on what your scenario is. And even if you're facing a common challenge, let's say you are trying to do manual instrumentation for a common scenario, like I said, oh, we are trying to you know, look for automatic instrumentation for console applications. This is something that you can turn to the community too. And people have faced this problem before. They would always, you know, share or give you what solution or where to start looking into. And on the cultural shift aspects, um, I feel like it is important to understand how your team operates too. What actually excites your team? You know, how can you be able to sell to them in the language that they would understand? And the other aspect is understanding how you can make it easier for other teams to adopt. Even though it is highly recommended that every team and every developer instrument their own code because they understand their code better, right? But how could you make it easier for them to be adopt? Could you provide, you know, libraries that abstract common set of logic? Let's say, you know, this is the way all your services are created in a similar, all your services are created in a similar way. Is it possible for you to create a library that does the setup and everything in place so that 
it makes it easier or it reduces that overhead when it comes to actually adopting it in their code. And this other aspect is what I've been trying to employ, which is finding a way to measure success, whether through you know, creating a very simple chat that allows you to be able to see how much you know, time it takes to be able to maybe investigate an issue or you know, root cause an issue or eventually resolve an issue. And then making use of when we start making use of this tool, like let's say we trace a particular application once we start making use of this, is this actually reducing how low, um, the time it takes for our developers to investigate a particular issue? I feel like having that metric, that data around it, will also motivate you know, other people to adopt more and more of these practices. And then on the technical aspect, um, I feel like starting with a proof of concept is really important. It would help you to identify bottlenecks in your system because, like I said, if this architecture aspect is something that could be a big bottleneck to your system, this is something you get to identify maybe when you're starting with a proof of concept. At least with this proof of concept, I don't have to really get buy in yet for my management. It could be a pet project you're doing by the side. I know that's extra work on your front, but if you really, this is something you could you know, start, if this is something you want to start front loading or be an ambassador for, this is a way you can start, starting with a proof of concept. And then building on that proof of concept, even when you decide to actually adopt this, in your team or in your applications? Could you start small? Could you pick a particular service and actually you know, get traces out of it first instead of waiting to be able to do this end to hand across all your services? And this would allow you to be able to avoid that all or nothing pitfall where we're like, oh, yeah, because our services are very complicated and we wouldn't be able to achieve distributed tracing, let's not do it at all. What if we are able to even trace each of our services independently? I feel like there's still so much value that we can get out of that, even if we are not thinking about distributed tracing yet. And the last part is on making a plan, whether it be with the exact type of data you want to collect, whether the, um, the different tools you want to use, whether you want to use the collector, how do you intend to deploy it, and you know, is there a rollout strategy you want to use around this? So all these different things is something you would probably factor in when you are trying to you know, draft out a plan into how your team is going to adopt this. So in summary, um, we explored some expectations and realities around adopting open telemetry, especially from you know, our own experience and then understanding that open telemetry is an enabler and not a silver bullet. We also saw that technical challenges might occur when in your journey to adopting open telemetry, but thinking about it as an iterative approach, using proof of concepts and avoiding the all or nothing pitfall, you can be able to build confidence and you know, create clarity on your path of adoption. And it is very possible that you face that cultural resistance, but with a supportive approach, you know, giving proper education and celebrating small wins, people can be able to embrace this, you know, open telemetry adoption with you. And finally, leveraging the open telemetry community, whether you want to get some insight or you want to get support, is going to be incredibly beneficial to your journey. And with that, I want to say thank you. Feel free to connect with me if you, you know, want to chat with me about this further. And please do share some feedback. I would love to you know, hear about how this went for you. And thank you once again for you know, coming to this talk and listening to me to the end. <laughs>
Ah, yeah, good question. Actually, for some services that were in our control, yes, we did. Because, again, some may be very complicated to adopt without having to modify it, especially the legacy ones. Yeah. Hi. So Hi. I've been on two platform teams. I've had to roll out open telemetry for, like, the whole company. Yeah. Um, and most of what you said, like, just... 100% on the dot, oh. <laughs> um, like in the Java auto instrumentation, there were like memory leaks I had to solve. Um, like there's a lot of the same like cultural stuff. Uh, I, so mostly I just want to say like all of it, super great, super on mark for like my experience rolling it out for two companies. Mm. The one thing I was curious about was like the iterative approach. Mm. Because one thing I found is like companies that only go from like no open telemetry to open telemetry tend to sign on with some kind of provider yeah. for dashboards. Yeah. And so with that, it's really hard to take an iterative approach because you've already committed to, we have this multi-million dollar contract now. Yeah. So now we're paying double on observability until we go really all or nothing. Yeah. Um, so it's, it can be hard at a lot of companies to do that iterative process. And I was wondering like, if you had any thoughts about that. Yeah, um, that's actually a good question and I may not be able to provide a complete solution. Reason because in Microsoft, generally they've been, like they provide observability platforms and we essentially are not paying for it. So <laughs> we can do whatever we want with it and you know have metrics with so many cardinalities and not have to worry about so many things, right? So it's like we have that flexibility to play, but some other, from some other people's experience, one thing I realized is that you probably don't want to do that commitment like hell on. There are several open source tools you can actually use right now to be able to, you know, whether you want to visualize metrics or even traces. Some people use Jaeger to start with before now understanding that, oh, this is something that we've now figured out and we want to use. And then you can now go into committing to a particular vendor. So, yeah, I don't know if <laughs> I helped around there, but that's no, just... That, that was good. I agree. <laughs> I've seen the procurement happen before yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. That's probably what I would recommend. Yeah, I would recommend you start with, you know, start small. <laughs> yeah. So, great, great talk, Hope. Um, with, uh, one thing I was wondering, uh, in, in this process, was there any negotiation around with your team and other teams in terms of what data to actually capture in your tracing? And then, um, like, if there was potentially, you know, uh, data that needed to be classified certain ways, if, if, you, were, if you tried to avoid some of that, or if, uh, if you're... Uh, if your storage platform kind of abstracted some of that away from you and you didn't have to worry about it. Uh, uh, how, how did you approach that with your team? Yeah, so if I understand your question correctly, so did I have to worry about, you know, extracting some certain part of data out of it? Like yeah, maybe- Or just in general, like starting in general, like what data, you know, did you have to negotiate with your team what, sh what data you wanted to capture, like what was gonna be useful in your tracing? For, for what type of problems you were expecting to solve. Yeah. Or, and then of that data that you're gonna capture, was there, was there maybe privacy considerations or anything that you had to look into? Yeah, um, so, good question too. <laughs> so <laughs> for our services, some, some of the data we get around our services, we necessarily don't worry about them. And that is because we are not sort of capturing any data that was, you know, something that we couldn't share publicly. Because even though we worked on infrastructure layer, majorly there were data around maybe machines that were monitoring or all those things. So there wasn't anything really necessary that was going to be a threat or maybe a data we really couldn't touch. But on the other front, I know there are, you know, agents that could also help you to extract or filter out whatever data you don't want to touch. Like if there are personal identifiable data, there are some, you know, filters that comes with, there are some processors that come with the collector, I think that can allow you to be able to, you know, f extract out this data. So. 
Happy right. to do that. Thank you.